If you are curious about OpenAI, ChatGPT, how to generate a lot of these responses from ChatGPT automatically, then you've come to the right place. In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down how you can integrate ChatGPT, that AI that everyone's talking about, and include it in automated processes for your daily life and work. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth and I'm the owner at Gap Consulting. It's our mission to help you get organized and automated with no code tools. We try to help you save up to 10 hours of your time every week through tools like no code automation that I'm going to be demonstrating here in this video. Before we get into the heart of the video though, I first want to invite you to open up your own make account. What I'm gonna be showing you here today can be started on a free trial with make. And if you sign up using our affiliate link below, you will get your own 30 day free trial to make so that you can start building automations like this that run in the background. Seriously, it's one of my favorite bills that I pay every month because when I spend 20, $30 with make every month, I'm realizing that it saved me literally hours worth of my time because these tasks were all automated in the background, totally worth it. So I hope that you choose to follow me along. Let's go ahead and hop on into my screen and get started. Now, the first place I'm starting here is in Airtable. It doesn't matter what software you're using per se to store your information. But the idea is that whenever you have an automated system, as I'm going to be building for us here, Information has to start from one place so that it can be sent somewhere else to do whatever the thing is that we want to do. In our example here, I've received three different reviews. I wanna highlight though that this could be coming from a Google spreadsheet, Google Sheets. This could be Excel in the cloud. This could be in Notion. This could be in any software that you already use. I personally love Airtable. It's what we built our business on but you don't have to use it in order to get the results that I'm gonna share with you here. The idea is that we have our information stored somewhere and I've got three different reviews and they are clearly very different. This first one I've intentionally written to be very negative. This middle one is moderate, neutral, and then this last one is very positive review. Now, how could we possibly use AI to help us understand this information better? Well, one way that we might do it is to ask AI to categorize this information for us. Was this positive? Was this negative? Was it neutral? What kind of information did we have here? That's the start. But also we might wanna know, do we wanna follow up with these people? Like, do I have to send something else? Is there more action I need to take? Or did we just get some feedback and that's it? We'll review it at the end of the quarter. So these are two different possible ways that I might want to ask OpenAI or ChatGPT to give me some information about this information that I've already received. And through leveraging the power of AI, it saves my time. I don't have to go in and read every review as it comes in. Instead, I can build automated processes in the background that say, hey, every time you get a new review added to this particular spreadsheet or database, fill in the blank, well then I'm gonna go and send it out to ChatGPT, I'm gonna analyze that feedback, and I'm gonna let you know if you need to do some other stuff. So we're gonna be building a somewhat complicated automation here. Let's go ahead and hop on in one step at a time. Remember that this is my starting point. All I have is three reviews and different notes or things that were said in those different reviews. All right, now we are going to flip on over to make so that we can start building our automation. Flipping over here, we have to understand really how automation works. Every automation is gonna start with a trigger. The trigger is the thing that tells the automation it's time to get to work. Something has happened and I need you to go about doing that automated thing we talked about. So what is our trigger? Well, we start off by clicking here and we know that our data lives in Airtable. So let's use Airtable as our trigger. I can do a little search here and it reduces the amount of different software that I'm looking at. Make connects to thousands of different tools. So I wanna kind of streamline the process and get down to the thing I'm looking for. So here's Airtable. What are my options? 
One option is to watch the records, and this returns all newly created or updated records in a view based on a last modified time field. I don't want to do that. I don't want to return a bunch of records, and I don't want to be looking at last modified time fields. What I want is when I have that information inside of Airtable, well, at the time that it comes into existence, then I want to send it on out and analyze it with AI, etc. Now we have an option for this, it's called watch responses, but this can get a little bit confusing. When we set up this watch responses trigger, it requires us to then go back into Airtable and write a little bit of code so that we can leverage a webhook and connect these two softwares together. I wanna to keep this as simple as possible. So actually, I'm gonna rewind us a little bit here and we are going to just go right to using a mail hook. Now this might sound intimidating if you've never done this before, but bear with me, I'm gonna walk you through this step by step. Now I've searched down here for webhook. This is a particular module option inside of Make. I'm gonna use this webhook, and again, I know it sounds intimidating, but watch me as we go through it, it's really not that bad. What I need to do is have a record in Airtable that meets certain conditions. When it meets those conditions, I want to send that information to make. And one way that I can do that is to send the information in the body or in the subject of an email. And so that when make receives that email, it knows that if I'm receiving an email at this email address, it must be coming from this specific automation. Well, then it knows what it has to do. It receives an email, at that very unique email address, the custom mail hook, and then it goes about performing the rest of the automation. So let's leverage this, use this to our advantage. So I'm going to set up a custom mail hook here and I'm going to add a new hook. So I say add, and I'm just gonna rename this to test for AI, and I'm gonna save it. All we're doing right now, it doesn't even have to do with the AI component itself. We're just building the trigger so that our automation can start performing automatically. All right, what Make does for us here is it creates this very unique email address. So let's copy this email address to our clipboard and let's flip back on into Airtable. So what I wanna have happen is when certain conditions are met, then I wanna send information to that email address. So let's actually now build an automation in Airtable to allow these things to talk together. So let's suppose that I have a checkbox here. And inside of my checkbox field, when it gets checked, that is the thing that I want to use to send information to make. Well, I can go into Airtable's automations here and I can build a trigger. I say, whenever you have a record that matches these conditions inside of my table, and the condition is that the checkbox is checked. So once you check a box in that table, and let's find an example record. We only have one checked box, so it's review number one. Well, when that happens, I want you to send an email. Send an email, where do I send this email? Well, I have already copied to my clipboard that mail hook. So I'm just doing a copy paste right here and dropping that mail hook in. Now, when that message gets received, I need to send information about this record to make so that it can do the next parts of the step. So in the subject here, I'm going to bring in the Airtable record ID. Now the reason for doing this is this record ID is unique. So when Make receives it, it's gonna know exactly what record that is in Airtable and it can go find out everything about it. So that's what I need here. And I'm also in my message going to pass along the information in the review. If you recall, we called that notes. So let's do a little preview about how this email is gonna look. If I generate a preview for this email, it's going to say, well, I'm sending it to this mail hook, I'm sending the record ID in the subject, and here is the review that we received in the body of the email. All right, do we like it? Let's give it a shot. I'm gonna turn this automation on, and we're gonna go back into make now. I'm gonna say okay, I'm gonna right click on this module to run it only. So this is looking, it's waiting for that message to be received. So let's flip back into Airtable. I'm gonna uncheck my box. I'm gonna recheck my box and flip back into make. When I recheck the box, Airtable sends an email to this address. We just wait 
for that email to get received, and it just was. So here's what it looks like. We received this subject, this is the record ID in Airtable, and we received this body, and this is the review that was left inside of Airtable. So now we have the information we need in order to move on to the next step. The next step for us is gonna be interacting with ChatGPT. So we're gonna add another module here, and I'm going to just look up ChatGPT. It's gonna get right here. OpenAI is what I'm looking for, and there are a bunch of different options for us. I wanna draw your attention to a couple of the different action options for us. Number one is creating a completion. This is when we send information for a provided prompt, and then we get something back from ChatGPT. So in our example, we're gonna leverage this. We're gonna say, hey, this is the information we have. We wanna send this to you, this review that we got, and we wanna know, do I have to do something else about it? Like, do I have to take further action? And also, can you help me categorize this feedback? So that's what we're gonna ask it to do, and it's gonna give us those responses. We're gonna do that in this action step of a completion. But you have other options as well. You can generate images using Dolly. You can simply give it like a prompt that says, I want you to create a dragon overlooking a castle, and it will generate that image for you. Pretty remarkable. Also, we have Whisper. Whisper allows us to do things like creating transcriptions of an audio file to text. Really, really powerful stuff. Now, if you want to get super advanced, you have API calls. API calls give you a lot of functionality. You can get really customized inside of generating your API call. It's definitely on the advanced side of things. So for us, we're gonna keep it pretty simple. We're gonna just create a completion here, and all we wanna do is send information to ChatGPT and get some feedback back. Once we're set up here, it's gonna ask us to select a method. So we have create a prompt completion or create a chat completion. I'm gonna keep it on chat completion for our example. And now we're gonna go into the model. So we have to choose, what are we using here? Is it ChatGPT4, which is currently the most advanced model? Do we wanna use 3.5? It really comes down to you and the system and the setup that you have with ChatGPT. So understand that some of these models are more costly, specifically ChatGPT4. And as new models are released in the future, I'm sure they will be the more costly models as well. So if you wanna use those, great. If you wanna use 3.5 or something even earlier, you can do that too. Now it comes to the part where we need to ask ChatGPT to give us some sort of response. So this is where our message is gonna come in. So number one is the role. Who are we working with? Like the information that we're gonna to pass to ChatGPT, is it system level? Is it user level or is it assistant? So if you're not really sure about these, I would recommend taking a look at what these different roles are and how they work. So a quick Google search shows me, thanks to a Medium article, that the user role represents the input or message provided by the human that's interacting with ChatGPT. Users can ask questions, make requests, etc. And if we drill into this even further, let's go into here. Again, thank you to the person who put this lovely article together. Assistant role represents the language model, such as ChatGPT, which generates responses. And then lastly, the system role represents additional instructions or guidance. So what we're doing is we are the user that is asking information from the assistant. And so we wanna get that assistant output, but we are inputting information as the user. So if we go back into our message here, we can simply say, well, you know, I'm the user and I'm coming in with this message. Here's what I'm sharing with you. I've received a review as follows. And I'm gonna put this inside of quotations here. And inside of my quotes, I'm gonna go down and because of the fact that I parsed this out inside of the body of my email, I can just grab the body of my email and drop it in here. So if you've never built an automation like this before, what I'm doing is including static and dynamic elements. Static elements are the same every time the automation runs. It will always say in the prompt, I've received a review as follows. The review text is gonna be different every time because a different piece of mail will have been received at that email address, right? So what I'm doing is I'm including these different pieces and the, the elements from previous steps in my automation are variable. They're gonna be different every time the automation iterates. All right, so I've passed this message along. I've received a review as follows. 
and then I'm including the review. On a new line now, I'm going to say, please categorize this review in one of three categories. Is the review positive, neutral, or negative? All right, so this is my first output here. Before I move on to the next stage of things, what I'm gonna do is open up my little bubble again here, and I wanna copy the text that I have, and you'll see why in just a minute. This is the element that I'm passing that is dynamic in my prompt, so I'm just copying it, Control C. Now, back inside of my module here, I'm going to say, okay, and we are going to right click on this and run this module. When I do this, it's gonna say, well, what is that text element that came from the previous step? And this is why I copied it. So now I can paste that in. So here's my review that I copy and pasted for this particular iteration. Remember this review information, this is gonna be different every time the automation runs based on what information we have in Airtable. All right, I click okay, and we see what the output is here. So if we drop in here, I can go in, this is my input, this is the information that we shared with ChatGPT, and here's my output and my choices, one message, the review is negative. There we go. I love this. Now the only difference that I wanna make here is I only wanna receive a one word response, right? I don't wanna say the review is negative, I want negative. So let's go back into ChatGPT here and can I add another message? I wanna add another message, a system-based message, where I'm giving system instructions that say, in your output for this prompt, only respond with one word. I'll even go so far as to say, capitalize the first letter of that word. All right, let's cross our fingers and hope that we got this right. Now remember, I can run this module again, and because I haven't copied anything new to my clipboard, I can just paste the same message in here and see what we get. Here's my output. I drill into that magnifying glass again. I'm gonna go into my choices. One message negative. Now we've got it. So this is how I'm leveraging the different voices as I'm communicating with ChatGPT. I'm giving it my information, my user information, but I'm also setting up system rules for it and saying, this is how I expect you to answer in this prompt. I only want one word. I want it to be capitalized. Those are system-based rules, but then my chat with it is going to be variable. It's gonna depend on what that review is every time. So very cool options for us here. Now as a next step, I could use this same thing. I might right click here and then duplicate this module. Let's clone it and I can set it up right here and let's align it so that it looks nice. And I'm gonna make some changes to this one. So I have the output here of what is the category of the review, but what I wanna know is I need to know if this review requires further follow-up or action from me. Please respond with either yes for additional follow-up or no for no additional follow-up. And I'm gonna put yes and no inside of quotations here. And let's give this a shot. Now, I'm gonna hit okay here. We're gonna right click again and run this module. And when I paste in my text, uh-oh, I copied something else by mistake. Let's go back to Airtable so that I can grab my review again. As you see, what I've written in here for this fake review is, I demand a refund. So ideally, ChatGPT would say, yeah, you're gonna need to take some action here. You need to refund this person some money, whatever the case may be. So when I paste this in, now I'm asking it a different prompt, but using the same information. And so when I run this one, well, let's see what it says. I can go into choices, one, message, yes. All right, so I'm getting an output from the assistant, the chat GPT assistant role, there it is, and it's telling me, yes, you need to take some further action with this. So what do I do with this information? I've correctly and properly automated the process to ask chat GPT to analyze my review, but I don't have it in any tangible form, right? It's just in the ether right now, it's floating out there. Chat GPT analyzed it, but I don't have the answer in a tangible way. So as a final step, I'm gonna bring this information back 
to my original data source. So for us, that data source was Airtable. So what I'm going to do really quickly is build a new field called record ID. And the reason for this, if you recall, we passed the record ID of this piece of information over to ChatGPT. Remember at the beginning, when we sent that original email, we had the record ID in the subject and we had the review in the body. Well, if I want to find this record inside of Airtable, I need to map it back to this field. So I've created my record ID field so that I can use it as a search function. Now, also, I want to be able to put this information somewhere. So I'm going to create a single select field in Airtable that is called the category. Category of review. I'm going to run a single select and I have three different category possibilities, negative, neutral, or positive. I'll create this field. And then lastly, follow up required. And this will also be a single select field and it will either be yes or no. So can I get this to work? Well, back into make. Now that I've created a place to store the information, I'm going to add a final step. Last step, back to Airtable we go. We are going to upsert a record which creates a new or updates an existing record. So let's go ahead. What is the record that we are going to be upserting? Well, I need to first connect to my proper make account because we are a consulting company. We have a lot of different make accounts going on in here. Now I'm going to flip over to my base in Airtable. I've called this AI example. So let's find it here. Here it is. And next to my table, I only have one table. Again, we're just mapping down to the exact record we need to go to. Now, what is the record ID? Well, if you recall, we passed that record ID right here in the subject of the mail hook that we received in step one. So let's grab that. I'm just dropping the subject in here, which will include the record ID. That is the record that I want to update. And what do I want to update about it? Well, the category of review. So if I go to my first prompt here, this was module four. If you're unsure, you can hover over this data and you'll see that that module kind of pulsates on my screen. So that's the one I'm looking for. I have to drill into the choices. I have to drill into the message and I have to get the content back. So let's find that. That's my category, but my follow-up came from this particular module. This is module five. So again, I drill into choices. I drill into message. I drill into content. So I include those elements here. We should be good to go. I click OK. And in order to test this thing fully, I'm going to need to save it. I always forget that. Save it and then turn it on. All right. Now I can zoom out a little bit. Let's click out. Let's see where this thing is going. And here's my module all set up. I'm going to flip back into Airtable now. I'm going to uncheck a box and I'm going to recheck a box. What's happening in the back end? Airtable automations are sending this message to the mail hook. Make is picking it up, it's analyzing it, and as you see, it just dropped that information in. This is a negative review and it requires follow up. What about this one? What would we expect ChatGPT to reply? Well, let's see. The review says, I wish the service had been better, but overall, we had a good experience here and might consider returning. Sounds like no follow-up is required at this time and it's a neutral category. At least that's how I intended to phrase it. So let's check that box and we'll see what chat GPT says. Again, all of this working in the background for us, we don't have to do anything. So chat GPT actually thought that this sounded a little negative. Okay. I mean, I suppose it could have sounded a little negative, but it also said no follow-up is required. Last one here. This particular one says, this was an absolute best experience, stunned to the attention to detail, blah, blah, blah. I feel seen and heard, thank you. This is a glowing review. It should come back as a positive category of review. And I don't think any follow-up would be required here. So as you can see, it's taking ChatGPT just a moment to think. There we go, dropped in the category of positive and the follow-up of no, we don't need to follow up. So correctly analyzed from ChatGPT. As you can see, Leveraging ChatGPT with automation will save you so much time. You can build these automated processes, but lean on ChatGPT for a lot of the heavy lifting and you will start to see your workload reduced more and more. I hope you got a ton of value from this video. If you did, please be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. 
And of course, in the meantime, keep on building.